What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.5 Beta 3 to register developers about one week after the release of Beta 2. So we are officially back on a weekly release schedule. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got the third beta of iPadOS 15.5, tvOS 15.5, HomePodOS 15.5, watchOS 8.6, and macOS Monterey 12.4. We also got updates for a couple of other devices that we'll talk about here in a moment. But in this video, we're mainly talking about iOS and iPadOS and discussing what's new in the software, along with what to expect from Apple next. All right, so as always, let's start off with the size and build number. You can see here the size of this update came in at just under 700 megabytes, came in at 683 for me on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That size, of course, will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from but that is coming from version two or beta two rather. So if we go into our settings, general about, if we go ahead and check out the build number here, you can see it is 19F. 5062G. And if we head down to check on the modem firmware, you could see that remains unchanged at 1.61.00. So now what's new here in beta three? And just like with beta two, the majority of the changes are gonna be on the back end in the code. So we're still waiting to see a lot of those changes come to fruition that we can actually see on our device, but we're probably not gonna see that until the final release of 15.5. So for now, we just have a lot of really small changes like we talked about with Apple Pay Cash. We have the Safari icon right here if we go to the share sheet we have a new icon for find on page a new glyph icon right there that looks better and we just have a lot of other small changes with the software the big changes are still in the code we're still waiting to see those now we do have some bug fixes that I wanted to mention and the first one has to do with the game center so every time you went into a game on betas one or two you would get a game center pop-up every single time even if you're already logged in you would get it it would be annoying but that has been fixed here in beta 3 and going back into safari we also have the frequently visited tab here again so for whatever reason on betas 1 and 2 this was missing for me and several others so now frequently visited has returned with the third beta for both ios and ipad os now one thing that we are still not seeing that i'm really looking forward to is the apple account card so this is a rebrand of the itunes pass and i'm not seeing it anywhere in wallet you can see here i go to add something to my wallet and there's nothing there for an apple account card but i will keep you guys updated if we actually see something on the front end with this and as i mentioned earlier we do have some changes in the code so we had a ton of changes in the code in betas one and two but we have even more here in beta three so this is all thanks to steve moser on twitter who dug in and found these changes in the code but we can see here actually car keys is referenced in the code so we haven't seen anything about car keys in a while but it says car keys text was updated to indicate that you can hold your iphone next to not just the door handle but also the side mirror to open your car so you can see here the quotable the Apple has in the code. It says to unlock the car, hold iPhone near the door handle or side mirror. So that's interesting. That's basically like a Tesla feature, but that is coming soon. And it's gonna be rolling out to more cars in the future. It's actually out now for BMW and a few others, but it will be coming out to the masses soon. There's also several changes to sports kit in the code and also some changes in the home application. So not near as many changes in the code in beta three, but we do still have a few. There's also an interesting change in the photos application related to the memories feature. So it seems like Apple has a list of what they're calling sensitive sensitive locations and when you have a sensitive location any photos taken there will never be added to a memory so you can see the list of those places right here now if you take a look at the release notes for beta 3 you will notice that they're very similar to beta 2 which was very similar to ios 15.4's release notes not 15.4.1 15.4's which i found pretty interesting and so pretty much all of these are identical to what they were in beta 2 so we do have one fix here for store kit a resolved issue relating to subscription offers for developers. So really nothing too interesting here in the release notes. We do have some mentions about 120 Hertz on iPhones with ProMotion displays. But again, we've been seeing that since iOS 15.4. So that's not necessarily anything new here with 15.5. I also looked everywhere on these release notes for anything mentioning universal control, but there was no mention of universal control. So I would assume that it now works even if you don't have your Mac updated to the latest Mac OS beta or your iPad not updated to the latest Mac OS beta because on beta one you had to have both devices on the beta but now since it's not mentioned in the release notes i would assume that you don't need 
both devices to be on the same firmware. We also got a new firmware update for Apple's studio display. So the webcam had major issues after launch. A lot of people complain about the webcam having terrible potato quality, but that has been fixed with the latest 15.5 beta firmware for the studio display. Now this is separate from the macOS 12.4 betas. This is a firmware specifically for the studio display. We also got a firmware update for the AirTags. So it's been a long time since we've had a firmware update for the AirTags, but today Apple did launch version 1.0.391. So you could check that inside your Find My application. The build number for this new firmware is 1A301. And if you're wondering where to check the firmware of your AirTags, just go into the Find My application and to your AirTag and right here where it says now and we have the little battery icon right there just tap on that and it will show your serial number and the firmware version so you can see this one is not updated to the latest firmware because the latest is 1.0.391 so i'm still on 291 on this air tag so that's where you can check now of course since we are on a beta firmware we are going to have quite a few bugs and the first one i've noticed every single time i reboot my device is this one right here i get a notification from shortcuts that says automations will run once your iphone is unlocked so that is something I at least hope is a bug because I'm not really liking getting that every single time I reboot my device. So I'm hoping that's a bug, but it has been like that for the past two betas. So I'm starting to think that it might be a feature, but we don't have any way to turn that off in shortcuts. So I'm hoping it is a bug. So let me know if you guys get that as well, or if it's just me. I've also had a few people in my comment section and on Twitter complain about AirPlay. So AirPlay does seem to be a little bit better here in beta three. I always have issues with AirPlay because see there, the platter pops up quicker. And then also when I transfer that music over to my HomePod, it does seem to get there quicker. And the queue pulls up faster inside of the music application as well. Because sometimes when I would press on the queue right here, it would just take forever to load up the songs but that seems to be a little bit better here in beta 3. and then one issue that doesn't seem to be very widespread but some people have mentioned it so i wanted to put it in this video is inside of the camera application so some people would see a bug where when they took a photo it would automatically crash their camera application the stock camera application so i've not had that but if you're having that let me know in a comment down below it seems like some people are seeing that with 15.4.1 as well so it may not be just related to 15 now, as far as performance goes, you can see here I did run a Geekbench test and I scored a 1738 on the single core and a 4878 on the multi core. So you can see how that compares to beta 2, where I got a 1739 and a 4872. So higher on the multi core, slightly lower by one point on the single core. But overall, again, it feels about the same. That pretty much is like every beta these days since we're so deep into iOS 15. And the same goes for battery life. Battery life is gonna be about the same as it was on betas one and two. I've not noticed any difference in battery life, but I will say, actually I did notice the difference in beta two because that's when it got about as good as 15.4.1. Beta one, I did have some issues with battery life, but now on betas two and most likely beta three, we're gonna have battery life right on par with the latest public release which is 15.4.1 all right so now what is next for apple so as we mentioned earlier we are now on a weekly release schedule which means that next week we should see ios 15.5 beta 4 so maybe on may 3rd apple has loved these tuesday releases so we could expect to see that in the first week of may and then after that on the week of the 9th we could see a beta 5 and then an rc on the week of the 16th and then a final on the week of the 23rd so so that is what I'm expecting right now but of course things could change and that's why you guys should follow me on Twitter where I share details before I post on YouTube about my predictions on releases now I do also think that a 15.4.2 is still a possibility so I think we could see that within the next two weeks and honestly if we don't see it in the next two weeks it's probably not happening at all so either the week of the second or the week of the ninth I think it's possible for seeing a 15.4.2 to fix up some bugs and of course have to do with security patches and also the fact that we only have one version to downgrade to right now. So if somebody's having issues on 15.4.1, they can't go down anywhere else. They're stuck on that. So that's always usually a sign that Apple is planning to release a new software version 
pretty soon, at least within the next few weeks. And then if we go down here to June 6th, that is going to be the first day of the Worldwide Developers Conference. That's where we can expect to see iOS 16 Beta 1 get revealed on stage. And of course, we will see iOS 16 Beta 1 on our devices that day after the conference. So there you have it. That is iOS 15.5 Beta 3. Again, not a ton has changed, but if I do find anything else that has been changed on the software, I will mention it in my Apple Weekly episode coming on on Saturday. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 15 and more importantly, iOS 16 coverage coming very, very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.